Melatonin is called the sleep hormone because it's the main hormone in your body that regulates sleep wakefulness cycles and the circadian rhythms. But melatonin as a hormone has also many other health benefits. And in my opinion, it's actually the number one longevity hormone in your body that is helpful for extending longevity. Do it! Melatonin as a hormone is more than just a sleep hormone. It's a powerful regulator of many physiological processes and one of the most important antioxidants in the body. There are many health benefits to melatonin as a hormone. It makes you fall asleep better and deeper. It reduces the time to fall asleep. Melatonin has anti-inflammatory benefits and it fights inflammation and infections. Melatonin improves vascular endothelial function, which is very beneficial for cardiovascular disease prevention. Melatonin regulates the immune system and your stress levels. Melatonin supports bone and dental development. And melatonin protects against macular degeneration and protects your eyes. During sleep, melatonin increases the release of growth hormone. When it comes to longevity specifically and lifespan regulation, then melatonin has a kind of central role in all of the longevity pathways like sirtuins, autophagy, and uh, several others, NAD recycling, etc. And a lot of the, let's say, health benefits of calorie restriction or resveratrol, etc., can be partly mediated through like melatonin regulating these pathways. Recently, it was reported that melatonin also activates sirtuins in addition to other functions, such as regulator of circadian rhythms or anti-inflammatory properties. And the sirtuins are quite important longevity regulators, and they work together with NAD as well. Interestingly, it has been demonstrated that the NAD availability decreases over age, reducing sirtuin activities and affecting the communication between the nucleus and mitochondria at a cellular level. And NAD is obviously one of the major coenzymes in the body that regulates energy production and all the other hallmarks of aging. With age, you see a decline in NAD levels, and uh, with that, you see an increase in the hallmarks of aging. So it's important to maintain high NAD levels for as long as possible. When it comes to the NAMPT enzyme, which is the like your body's rate-limiting step in how much NAD you produce, then that's also dependent of uh, cert sirtuin 1. So cert 1 is this circadian rhythm related hormone or a protein inside the body and NAMPT is dependent of cert 1 which means that if cert 1 is offline the circadian rhythms are offline then the NAD recycling is also greatly diminished and uh, limited. So in order to make NAD you need to have the sirtuin and uh, circadian rhythm alignment that enable NAMPT to work properly. And melatonin obviously is at the center of all of this because melatonin regulates your sleep wakefulness cycles. When you go to bed at night, you produce the highest amount of uh, melatonin and uh, in that time period is where your body is repairing itself the most and uh, melatonin, yeah, maintains the circadian rhythm alignment in a, like a crucial uh, way. Stick around. So far, I've been talking about melatonin as a hormone and I do believe that most of the, let's say, benefits of melatonin are mediated through it being a hormone. And for that, you need to have the circadian rhythm alignment. And uh, this means that you need to enable your body to produce melatonin naturally before bed. And the highest rise of melatonin occurs in the earlier part of the night. So uh, usually the first half of the night, the first four or five hours, that's where you produce the most melatonin. The melatonin levels start to decrease at dawn and a few hours before you wake up. And when you wake up in the morning, that's where your melatonin levels should be low. And instead you start to produce cortisol, which is a second circadian rhythm hormone that is quite crucial for maintaining the circadian rhythm alignment. And in a lot of ways is also kind of quite central to making sure that you produce melatonin at night. Melatonin production before bed starts already the moment you wake up. And that's quite interesting because the bright light exposure, exposure to sunlight, especially in the morning, that stimulates a certain complex of proteins in the brain, POMC, that then helps to produce melatonin at night. So the healthiest melatonin production before bed actually starts in the morning. So you need to get exposed to bright light exposure that is going to help you to produce melatonin at night. The red and infrared light that you get from sunlight also increases melatonin. So the more sunlight you get exposed to during the daytime, the more melatonin you're going to produce. And it's, you know, that's also part of the reason why sunlight is beneficial for 
you know, regulating the immune system and helping with sleep quality. The more bright light exposure you get, and not like artificial light exposure, but actual sunlight with the full solar spectrum, that's and the infrared light, that's what is the healthiest, and that's what also produces the melatonin at night. In the evening, however, you want to minimize bright light exposure, especially blue and green wavelengths of light, because they inhibit melatonin. And if you use a lot of like smartphone or your computer screen or just the uh, lamp in your bedroom that has blue and green light that reduces melatonin production, the lack of melatonin is what is going to increase your, uh, it's going to worsen your sleep quality, but it's also going to increase like blood sugar cholesterol lipids and may even increase the risk of obesity or hypertension. Circadian rhythm mismatches are considered a carcinogen and shift work is also a carcinogen and a lot of the reason has to do with the disrupted circadian rhythms, disrupted NAD recycling and disrupted melatonin production. So in the evening it's important to minimize bright light exposure, minimize artificial light exposure and use like dimmer lights like Himalayan salt lamps or use uh, lights that you can dim down, reduce the brightness of it, and on the smartphone or the computer, just use filters. Nice. And with age, you see a natural decline in melatonin. Your body produces the most melatonin before puberty, and after you hit puberty, that's where your melatonin production decreases quite significantly and uh, that's also part of the reason why children stay young they have a lot of melatonin which uh, unfortunately you know or fortunately as well because if you didn't drop that melatonin then you would postpone puberty which may have like some negative side effects on like sexual maturation and developing sexual features so it's very important for your body to you know reduce the melatonin production after puberty but especially when you reach elderly years that's where the melatonin production decreases even more and the elderly people produce very little melatonin compared to adults and especially compared to children and that's also part of the reason why they think that older people don't sleep that long and you know when you don't sleep that well or you don't sleep that long that's where all the hallmarks of aging start to accumulate that's where you start to accumulate more damage because you're not getting the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant benefits of melatonin naturally and that's one of the reasons why you know the elderly people start to age much faster once they reach 70 or 80 so it's like a very rapid downfall at, at that point and it's kind of the culmination of many things at a certain age you start to see a decline in melatonin you see a decline in NAD levels you see a decline in metabolic health muscle mass, all those things, sex hormones, they decline quite rapidly. And uh, yeah, that's where the downfall happens. For a healthy health span, extending health span, you want to postpone it for as long as possible. And obviously exercising is important, uh, making sure you take care of yourself, maintaining high NAD levels are important, but maintaining higher melatonin levels is also important as an elderly person in your later years. This is where we can talk about melatonin as a supplement. I think for the elderly people who naturally don't produce, you know, that much melatonin, supplementing melatonin is actually one of the healthiest, like a longevity supplement for their age. Because melatonin supplements, they do improve insomnia, they do improve sleep quality, and uh, they do help to fall asleep. So if you are like an older person or even like any age, if you are struggling with sleep, then you could try, you know, supplementing melatonin every once in a while. But the key is to fix the reason why you're not producing melatonin, which is the circadian rhythm alignment and the low NAD levels and uh, the artificial light uh, before bed. Sometimes sleep is for infants. And when it comes to melatonin supplementation, then uh, it actually has been found to improve insulin resistance. The melatonin can even improve like lipid profile. It can help people regulate the blood sugar levels probably because of the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant benefits of melatonin that you uh, are missing out on if you don't have enough uh, melatonin but uh, yeah like even in healthy people using some melatonin every once in a while probably has yeah like the benefit especially if you're like getting sick or something and uh, then where you would need some more higher antioxidant activity there is also no fear that melatonin supplements would suppress your natural melatonin production in studies where they take even 50 milligrams of melatonin they don't see a negative feedback and uh, the body still produces melatonin uh, normally but for the sake of not feeling too tired after waking up or you know too groggy or some or waking up in the middle of the night then it is healthier to keep the melatonin dosage smaller so usually around 0.1 to 1 milligram is the kind of the most you should take on a regular basis and uh, if you're like sick then 10 milligrams if you have metabolic syndrome then 10 milligrams in the short term can also be 
kind of quite useful, but you don't want to take like 10 milligrams all the time because at very large doses, melatonin is actually a contraceptive and it can reduce the you know fertility and it potentially could also reduce sex hormones testosterone etc it's better to stick to a very modest smaller dose of melatonin and not use it too frequently so there you have it melatonin as a hormone is the most important anti-aging hormone in your body because it coordinates all the other antioxidant defense systems it regulates all the other longevity pathways, it kind of maintains good sleep quality, and it's just generally anti-inflammatory and beneficial for the circadian rhythm alignment. With age, you see a decline in melatonin, which at that point, it might be beneficial to supplement melatonin on a regular basis. Before that, if you're an adult, then uh, supplementing melatonin can improve like sleep quality or it can make up for some aspects of uh, jet lag or some other let's say circadian disruption if you're like chronically undersleeping then melatonin can help to you know catch up on that and still give you good quality sleep but you don't want to take large amounts of melatonin on a regular basis it doesn't suppress natural melatonin production but it can have like contraceptive effects or it might reduce sex hormones uh, specifically definitely don't give melatonin as a supplement to children especially pre-pubertal uh, children because it's going to postpone puberty you don't want to do that and uh, melatonin supplementation should only be considered if you're like an adult who has gone through puberty who has you know gone through the full sexual development but do you want to slow down aging and live longer if yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then message me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.